Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. I know you're probably expecting a walk around tour of this truck right now, but today's video is a little different actually. I'm gonna jump back about six months, um, right before I tore down <clears throat> the truck and started building the flatbed. In fact, I think I had taken the bed off, fixed the rust, and then my buddy down the street called me and was like, hey, you wanna go on a trip tomorrow? So I threw everything back on, actually it might've been the day of, threw everything back on the original setup and headed out towards Death Valley National Park here in California. Really fun, really, really fun trip. I actually took the camera with me, I took the drone, I got some footage, probably not enough to do a full YouTube video, but um, I've added that to the beginning of this video. And, uh, and then we did a really, really detailed walk around of my friend Ben's uh, truck. You can find his Instagram, probably somewhere in the screen or at least in the description and he has some some cool stuff going on really really well thought out DIY a lot of its very budget just all handmade um, really cool guy really cool truck so I hope you guys enjoy this is a hour-long detailed look this is like encyclopedia style so I know it's probably not gonna be super popular it's uh, not the right format for YouTube but for people who build their own stuff and are really really interested in these trucks in particular and setting up a camper I think this is really, really cool because he goes into so many details on every aspect of the truck. So before we start that, here's a couple of random uh, fun clips from that trip together and then we'll get into the uh, walk around. So hope you guys enjoy. Turn left onto the California 99 South Rim. Getting stoked. I'm trying to link up with my buddy right now. I found him, so I'm gonna turn these big lights off. All right, I'm gonna get set up and go to bed. Holy crap. Time to look around. Well, that was epic. This time, pancakes, of course, one under there. Epic. I woke up this morning, I was just like, oh, I'm so glad I decided to go because. Oh, snap. This is one of my favorite spots, guys. A little climb out of the valley, and it's like totally incognito, like you wouldn't really know it was right there. I don't know if you can tell from the hair, but I just took an epic photo. Probably gonna put it in like, boom, right there. Man, pure excitement out here, it's so fun. I probably just keep saying it over and over in each clip how much I love being out here, but it's just so fun, the combination of being in such an epic outdoor area and driving on some fun terrain. All right guys, we are well on the way into this little spontaneous short trip and man, it's been so much fun so far. So I left obviously late last night, you saw that. Spent the night in the back of the truck at a Red Rock and now we are just north of um, Lone Pine, California on Highway 395 and man, it's like I forgot how epic this area is. It is just so awesome every time I come back out here. It's like, oh yeah, this is why I love coming out here. It's just so cool. The snow is on the mountains right now, which is just so epic. Um, the contrast between the desert and just the really high mountains is so cool. And um, yeah, just stoked to be back out on a little trip and having so much fun. So right now we're heading to Eureka Dunes, which is one of the tallest um, natural sand dunes in North America. I believe it's 690 feet super epic so that's gonna be really fun and I think we're gonna be spending the night out there so pumped this is one of the coolest parts for sure
<laughs> I don't even need to show that. I see it show my face. <laughs> Woo! Is used to like. Yeah, yeah, we yourself, like nice stuff. Yeah, it's all like, it like not like top dollar, but like quality, because um, you know we're, it gets it's so nice. It. It's really cold and. Yeah. Yeah, these bushes. I'm like Four banger coffee. Yeah. That'd be a good coffee shop name. Yeah, you should be fine. Yeah. This is an epic shot right here. Mountains. <laughs> Definitely worth the drive. He's targeting the trucks. All right guys, super excited for today's video because finally gonna walk around one of my buddy's trucks and the funny thing is this truck is parked just a couple streets down from me and I've been seeing it since before I even bought my Tacoma and my Tacoma, I bought a couple streets from this one. So it's kind of cool, just like story coming together. Finally met Ben, um, walked over to his house, actually skateboarded over to his house and just started chatting about his Tacoma. And um, this is our first trip together. It's been a blast. I thought it'd be a great opportunity to introduce you to Ben and then also to walk around his really, really unique home-built um, Tacoma because what you're gonna see, I think it's gonna kind of blow your mind. It's all home done, all DIY. Um, and it's just so well sorted for how Ben uses it and he's been using it for 15 years All right, Ben So I know you and I know how you use the truck why you built it and how like your job is kind of unique and created the opportunity to be Taking trips like we're on right now, but tell everybody kind of the main purpose why you built it And uh, I think it's kind of interesting what you do for work too. Yeah, um, I work for the United States Forest Service uh, on a wildland fire crew mm -hmm. uh, known as a hotshot crew, it's a federal type one hand crew. And the way it works is we spend, you know, six months committed to work with pretty much zero availability for travel. Um, we're gone a lot and kind of travel all over the country. And then come off season, we have kind of the other side of the coin to where we end up with a, a good amount of time to take trips. And that's part of the reason why I built the truck the way I did, because I wanted something that would be able to take me places 
and I could just live out of the car and get a lot of places that are pretty remote and opted for the you know the smaller footprint to come because of where it can take mm -hmm. you and you're not really limited and it's also a little lighter on on the land because it is so much smaller and i mean we were on a bunch of little trails just coming here saying like kind of just praising the fact that we had these little trucks like i feel like sometimes i'm like i have to tell myself like this is why i have this truck because it it, mm -hmm. it does the only type of truck that like fits through some of the stuff we were driving or like those tiny narrow shelf roads and stuff and yeah it makes it very super unique but you also with your job you're like i feel like the trips you do are different than some people like you're not like going to spend time in the truck like you're going mm. a lot of times and then you're like hoofing it right? yeah like off the truck yeah so it's really the truck gets me to a place and then i'll leave the truck and do a lot of a lot of just little day hikes out uh -huh. and back and just try to get up into you know wherever yeah um, and then occasionally just overnights out of the car um and then but yeah with the smaller truck it makes it important to wear you can want to utilize every square inch of yeah. space because they are small so you sacrifice headroom <laughs> that's the other thing they are small <laughs> yeah they are small and i'm, I'm five ten so yeah. it's it's not i think that's like the the max height for first in tacoma owner <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like for success yeah that's funny all right cool well let's uh take a look at kind of just all the details of the track i think this is gonna be really cool all right let's start at the front this looks like a unique bumper <laughs> yeah this was one of the only things I actually didn't build, this was a Craigslist find. Uh, it was shortly after I got the truck. I bought it in 2006 with 100,000 miles on it. It's a, like I said, it's a 2000. Um, it was pretty much stock aside from the King coilovers, which have been inherited. Yeah, they're on <laughs> my truck now. Yeah, and, um, <laughs> So yeah, I it was just kind of looking for a bumper. It was before I had really kind of learned how to weld and, uh -huh. and build things. And so I found this on Craigslist and ended up scoring the winch with it. Oh, sick. Yeah, it's the Warren 8000X oh, okay. or something. It's got a bunch of spray paint on it now because I don't <laughs> care about overspray. And you have the steel cable in there, but yep. you were telling me that it's actually for what you use it for, like tearing down stuff or moving logs. Like that makes total sense to keep steel like yeah. you don't want it to abrade yeah i've used it more for random stuff i never thought i would have used it for like yeah i tore down a double wide with it yeah my friend's property <laughs> and um yeah. yeah and then just dragging logs up out of for, for bucking them up for firewood yeah, yeah. um and then I've, I've pulled myself out a couple times maybe twice and i've pulled a handful of other people yeah that's um, dope. but it's more like a utility winch than a recovery yeah for sure um but, but this is new i know yep yeah, so the the light bar I had some older um, like halogens on there, which had started to degrade, and the brackets were getting pretty pretty sour. Mm -hmm. um, and the LED generation now is very <laughs> so affordable and so much better. These are freaking bright too. Well, we yeah. saw them last night. We were comparing, basically measuring uh, light sizes, <laughs> and these were way more intense than the array that's on top of mine, but. Yeah. And you made this too from scrap? Yep. So the, the bumper, like the little, the mini little bump stop on the front, I welded that on ages ago so I can bump into things and the lights wouldn't be the first thing to take. That's right. The, the impact, I mean, whatever, hit something hard, it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. It's just like little. That um, makes sense. But yeah, this bracket, um, just scrap that was laying around. It's just some angle iron, a maybe eighth inch walled or. Nice. Uh, yeah, it looks um, clean. And this yeah. is all able, you're able to work on stuff like that at your job kind of during the off season. Mm -hmm. and, you get, and you were, he was telling me too, making like tools and parts even for your guys' fire rigs and yeah. stuff. Yeah, so a lot of the work, that, that's kind of how I learned how to do a lot of this was actually for the job. Because, you know, our budget is tight. And mm -hmm. so a lot of the, it goes a long way if we're able to make yeah. everything in house. And a lot of that is just, we just kind of gather scrap material yeah. and um and then all the t specialized tools for work you know yeah. I, I build those and and then so we have some like leftover pieces here and there that i'll poach and like a little insert for yeah. uh, a filing cabinet which turned into my oh my yeah panel. i know we got to check out that's probably a good point we're actually i want to show them the, the inside because you got double battery but then we got to show them the interior <laughs> yeah so the um i did the Secondary battery 
quite a while ago now and it, it's gone through a couple of phases to where initially my starter battery was in the stock location and then I had my secondary in this void, which I know not all Tacomas have it. Uh, mine doesn't have power uh, cruise control, and mm -hmm. I think that's where the module is on some. And there was and a void. ABS sometimes, I think too. Oh okay, yeah, it's there, yeah. And um, so I just made a little. I had a, another scrap piece of of sheet, and I just welded it to the inside of the <laughs> the fender well. I was wondering how you did that because I was measuring batteries and measure, measuring my compartment. I'm like, how can I fit a bracket in there? Because yeah. I love that, like, now I know whenever I see something orange, it was because it was made, yeah. made at work with the orange spray. Yeah, the orange it's spray. just the random high vis, like, little just <laughs> cool. Like, stuff. why not? It's fun. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, just as random bolts and just welded some nuts to the base. And um, so, this is where the secondary battery, what battery was originally. Um, it's not a very big space, so the Optimas are smaller. That's the only thing you can really fit here. Mm -hmm. Then my deep cycle went sour and I had to replace it. So then that's when I switched the locations. And this is now the starter battery. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to fit a more standard size deep like cycle. Like in a larger, cheaper. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. You have more options and you can get more amp hours. Um, nice. Instead of the Optimas. Where they're nice. They're good batteries, but they're, you're kind of limited on what's available. Yeah. Um, I've going to probably try and mimic bin setup for a dual battery for my truck. <laughs> that's super cool. Yeah. And so they're joined. Here's this solenoid. Hmm which is actuated on the ignition switch. And so in the accessory position, it's still open and the batteries aren't connected. Once you go to the run position, it's closed. So when the car is running, the alternator is charging both batteries. Nice. And when you turn it off, when anything you're turning on outside of like your headlights, is coming off the second battery no the headlights are also off the deep oh, cycle okay. so I, everything everything aside from the starter the winch and the air compressor That's are it. off the auxiliary because yeah because i rewired the the stock fuse block mm -hmm. to the secondary battery that's so smart yeah. it's, so, it's just peace of mind too because i like saw you just like last night you had all the lights on inside and i was just thinking He's probably not even worried about that. Yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah. like sitting there. Exactly. You don't have to think about it at all. That's and it's awesome. also hooked up to solar. Yeah. As well. So that I don't have to charge all just day. Way up there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then it took a while to clean up all the wiring because it was pretty messy at first. And so then I just got some bus bars to at least give some yeah. like cleaner terminals, make it a little easier for yeah, totally. wire management. Yeah. <laughs> Becomes a big deal when you DIY stuff and you just like, oh, I'll do this, I'll, I'll do that. And then if you don't start out with like a good groundwork for that, you end up with what we were working on last night on my truck. <laughs> Where the heck's this third wire yeah. coming from? Three wires. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, uh, let's look at the inside real quick. Yeah. Sweet. Classic Tacoma interior. Mm -hmm. Actually gets used. You just made that, right? Yeah, this is the latest um, interior change like i was saying with these little trucks just trying to make the most out of every square inch of space and um it kind of came about when i was same thing i was talking about with the front with cleaning up the wiring um i used the glove box as kind of a internal Dude. like wire management so you don't have so many wires coming through the firewall yeah exactly <laughs> definitely a problem i've run into yep and um so this like i finally found it's the blue C, you know, fuse block, a lot of them have the terminals coming out both sides. Yeah. Which are great. I have one of those in the back, but I wanted something cleaner and this is just the single sided. So it tucks oh, it up that nice. Makes and sense. So your ground and hot are all, everything's coming out one. Yeah. So it just kind of for this little space, mm -hmm. it was really nice to find this just single row fuse block to clean things up instead of like a, a chunky, cause I had an older, cheaper one in here. And it was just it was just a mess, but it yeah. worked. And then same thing, just a grounding bus bar. It's funny because I I came over when you were working on that the other day. And yeah. was, you showed it to me. I was like, oh, that's cool. But it looks kind of messy. And then like two days later, I saw a picture you posted. And I was like, holy crap, that looks awesome. <laughs> like it's all super cleaned up. I was yeah. Like, I was sick of every time I opened the the glove box. It was just like, oh, I need to I need to clean that up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And you just did a new screen. You got a backup camera. Yep super rad set of switches so what are all these switches yeah so these this uh six switch gang is powered you know through this uh -huh. system here um 
And so I was trying to like figure out which switches I wanted and um, I decided to do essentially like lights, like forward lights on the front. So we have mm -hmm. the front, you know, yeah. floods and off-road lamps and then kind of the, the ditch lights, which are up on the rack mm -hmm. for just more kind of side view. Um, rear floods yeah. for backing up. And then that's why this one is the, I can manually turn on the the backup camera. Oh, sick. So like it's just at a, any time. Yep, it's yeah. just a single switch, just, and it takes over. And so it was that, it was like kind of an interesting, like relay wiring, yeah. kind of like splicing. So, cause then when I go into reverse, it turns it on. Yeah. But then the switch also turns it on. Was a diode in there? Uh, no, just, oh. just a relay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then this third one is actually for the amplifier for the, the, oh. the mobile radio. Which is nicely tucked in there. Mm, cause these aren't very loud. Yeah. And so, and if you just plug in the remote speaker mm -hmm. and the jack, it you can't really hear it. it. So I needed to amplify it, and then the um, same thing. Then I got a little um, radio interference. Uh, hmm. I'm drawing a blank filter, yeah. and so that's wired in um, to clean up the power supply to the radio. So when I turn on the amplifier, it's it's, it's clean. All clear. Yeah, because yeah, at first I turn it on and it was like, and you can uh, hear that engine whine as you throttled up, like the. Zzzz. I used to try and find the radio station in my first car for that the one oh. turbocharger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, nice. Yeah, and then I have one vacant one still, which is, is this it? magnet? Yeah, that yeah. Oh, uh, that's sick. Yeah, so that's also just and that's a little support too. Yeah, it's that's just scrap. Um, same thing, all these little things, and I just screwed it straight into. People the dash. are gonna be like, does that but does that vibrate off? But I could tell by placing it on there that's holding on like pretty damn good yeah just like a nice little magnetic case and so that holds just a phone yeah. there that location because that's where i had my phone until i did the whole dash thing mm -hmm. i still like like that like a lot like yeah. it's just so convenient mm -hmm. it's just right there and you just come in like out, off, out of your pocket boom yep. just like right away yeah nice and you've got a rear locker arb rear locker and then you've got like sweet storage back here too yeah. this little stuff zone yeah so I, and, I took out the rear seats a while ago um just because nobody ever rides in the back not like anyone can fit in there no <laughs> it's like a normal person exactly like my eight-year-old niece <laughs> yeah took her, like on a drive once and that's about it and um so the dog a lot of times i have a dog bed here uh -huh. um but yes yeah, so i took out the back seats replaced the flooring got rid of the carpet and then put in the, the uh, like, like the washout yeah, the vinyl, and then I, I lined underneath that with the like the noise dampening. Dynamat kind of stuff. Yeah, it's some generic brand. Yeah. Um, Did it help? Yeah, yeah, it's nice because I had read that everyone who ditched the carpet just the road noise. Oh right. Yeah. Not, maybe not necessarily better than just carpet, but better than what it was when you removed the carpet. It, exactly. I uh, noticed when I like drop my rear seat down, mm -hmm. like just fold it down, it's like really noisy. Oh yeah, just through the yeah. the back. Yeah, bed. yeah, yeah. Um, and so the same thing. This is just kind of like. A, metal or metal yeah. wood, wood sheet just to kind of same thing help get some separation then just mounting points mm -hmm. um it's mostly just like tools subwoofer yeah um and then same thing just a little there we for more storage of tools that just kind of live in here yeah um, another random little bin with a perfect size bag inside yeah you know, like toilet sheet bag and some this stickers. is what's so cool though about like i feel like then your build and a build that's like built off like use repeated use and use and use it's like it's not like you can yeah you can plan like i'm going to build a storage thing that's perfect for this bag that i have but it's like if that's not the bag that you use on your trips like mm -hmm. and you put the specific thing in there like you don't end up with a build that's like work like that just works so well like i can see your sandals that's where your sandals go mm -hmm. like yeah and like your little tiny binoculars and this bag fits right under and like your toiletries are right here mm -hmm. i mean you could pretend to plan all that out but it's like no way it's gonna work perfect until you've just like refined it over years and years mm -hmm. hats yeah and fire the, extinguisher yeah. i still need to get one of those <laughs> and there's the the speaker the remote speaker oh. for the for the mobile oh yeah radio. that makes sense yeah. Okay, well, we could go forever in here and <laughs> everywhere, so let's move to uh, somewhere else. Okay, so we've covered kind of basics, the engine, the setup, the inside. I want to get to the camper because I feel like that's like why it's so crazy. But quickly, what size tires? I know you just upgraded suspension, so mm -hmm. tell us about what you're running in front and back. Yeah, the, um, 
Like you said, the tires, 285, 75, 16. Um, we've gone through a couple different tread patterns, but a handful of Craigslist mud terrains, um, which were fine. Nice, just like picked them up, like yeah. partially used. Yeah, yeah, nice. like some KM2s that were like, I got like two years out of them. Yeah. Um, but I opted for the Toyo um, AT3s hmm. because I'd spend, you know, to get places from where we live, you have to drive a lot of highway miles. Yeah, we like 400 miles to here, right? Yeah. yeah. And so like, I'm not in the mud a whole lot. So I found like the all-terrain is, a, especially now because they've kind of reworked They're a lot like, of all-terrains, yeah. are a little more of like that hybrid. Yeah. Um, a little more aggressive tread pattern just and the, it's i've been real happy with them i have yeah. actually three at3s and one at2 because oh <laughs> i blew a ball joint in mexico and, picture right here possibly yeah. I can figure out that. <laughs> and roasted a brand new tire that had maybe 500 miles on it and uh, then bought a new tire but they only had the at2s that's a class yeah so yeah. i have an accent tire. that'll that, <laughs> that'll stay with the truck i'm sure for years yeah <laughs> that's dope um and then yeah so the suspension um, it was a long time coming. I finally upgraded to the Icon setup with the upper arms and uh, the coilovers. And the, the Icons now have the delta joint for the upper arms, yeah. which I guess is a, a reworked. It's a much stronger, more resilient build than the Uniballs. Uh -huh. um, and then I did the lower ball joints because one of them was had broken, the other was not far yeah. from it, and um, and then I replaced the lower arm bushings. Nice. Yeah, which that was a process. Yeah, but you told me you got ones that don't tell me what brand you bought, but your mm -hmm. friend bought one with a white line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you're a, gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Get the white line. Bush. It'll save you a lot of time if I, because. Oh, you, you bought energy, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So like, if you get just the bushings. It's doable, but it's it's a process. Mm -hmm. Like the second time would be much easier, but you definitely need like a, a solid impact driver and some big clamps, torch, and it's a messy job. And but if uh, you if you get the white line, you don't have to do that. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, a torch. Or maybe oh, to get the old one out. Yeah, and a small bottle jack yeah. that you can fit inside the uh, the lower arm. But that yeah, and then it's just a straight swap. Yeah. Um, where exactly. the the energies you have to reuse some of the original components. Yeah. But all said and done, it's same result. Man. Much nicer yeah. now than it was. Yeah, I was asking you about how the chatter on the uh, the road coming out here was, and I was like, it's like better. Yeah, <laughs> it's, so nice. it's nice. <laughs> and then the back is just stock leaf. No, it's not stock no, leaf. No, the, the rear, it's the old man emo Dakar um, okay. leaf pack with the extra leaf because of all the weight I was dragging around, mm -hmm. and then the Bilstein. Uh, 5125s, and okay. it's the... Is that the tic the Tundra shock? Uh, I don't know. It's not... They're not meant for a Tacoma. Uh -huh. um, they're both 10-inch stroke, uh -huh. um, which is with a stock setup or not extended bump stops, you'll bottom them out. Mm. Um, and then the, the shock mount bushing doesn't fit uh, the stock Tacoma, so I had to kind of ream out the bushings a little bit to get them to fit. It was... But the advantages, the extra droop travel. I was able wow. to get two more inches of droop out of the rear oh, with wow. the old man emu springs, um, and then I have the Timbrin bump stops. So those oh, are my nice. extended bump stops. Oh yeah, they're huge. Yeah, because then I don't have to worry about bottoming out those ten inch shocks. Oh, okay. It's really close on the driver's side. The passenger side, I have a little bit, maybe like about an inch more. I wonder if I bottomed out my shock because I literally snapped the shaft off and I re <laughs> welded it back on, but maybe that's what happened. It may have been, like yeah. Like just, just crushed it off. Yeah, because the stock Tacoma shocks, one is longer than the other. The driver's side is shorter because uh, of where the stock mounts are that the passenger side actually has a longer shock. Weird, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. All right, now time to get into the camper, which mm. is, <laughs> there's a lot going on. All right. This is what I think is you, you guys are going to be blown away by is this camper setup and how detailed it is. So you told me it's based on a ARE shell, but you kind of had to custom order it because you have, well, you could tell them. <laughs> yeah, the, I used to have an old fiberglass shell and there's just not much room. So what I wanted to go was slightly larger, um, but not 
you know too big because it's like same thing with four cylinder and just they mm -hmm. didn't want to catch that much wind so i had seen some of these like contractor shells just around and i liked the hatch option uh so i was trying to find one on craigslist and there was no way i was going to find one uh or even just especially even the way i wanted it so i, I decided that i ordered it um and i think it was like 1500 bucks that's not bad brand new what the heck? yeah they've gone up they've gone up a yeah. lot you can't, <laughs> you can't find a used one for like under that yeah that's insane i mean especially not with all this yeah and so it was the base model the only thing i changed was the it's three inches above cab height and then it's got the hatches on both sides yep with the windows and then the rear sliding window mm. into the cab so at least i have like, oh, wow. access um and you have the windows inside the wind doors, which... Yeah, 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 which I think you may get the windows for free. Hmm. I, free I mean, whatever. I just feel like I haven't seen, like, work shells with with windows. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah, and so it was, it was exactly what I wanted just for being able to make it as much outside as possible yeah. when you're in the back of a truck. Still can't see up. But at least you get a nice view. Yeah, because you were telling me like you sleep with the wind with the things open a lot. Yeah, I'm yeah. worried about like getting bit by a <laughs> giant <Yeah>. bear. <laughs> but let's oh. take a look at like <laughs> everything inside the shell because there's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, so I had um I had had a handful of different build outs in the old uh, camper shell. And that's where I kind of got the idea for when I did change formats to the slightly larger shell. Mm -hmm. I had an idea of how I wanted to build it. Um, and I had actually broken part of my old camper shell by having too much weight up on top and going through you know, bumps and it separated the wall. So that's, I didn't want this camper shell to be load bearing at all. I'm kind of wondering if that might have happened to mine <laughs> <laughs> on this trip. <laughs> yeah. And so that's why I opted, I built the rack uh, around the shell. Uh, which in the shell is mounted like on top of it. Basically. Yep, yeah, the shell, it's through bolted into the, the bed rails. Um, you can get into that more later, but it's also the platform for the, the cot. Oh. Because I didn't want to have any sort of structure in this corner just to try to, you know, make use of as much space as possible. So the, the it's kind oh, of suspended no on the passenger side Oh, that's so smart. Mm -hmm. And then a little piece of P cord to keep the little mattress from sliding off. <laughs> and uh, you'll see it's it's on hinges. Yeah. So there's there's two hinges front and rear, and these posts. Yeah, I can I, see that rolls under. Yep, I just welded a little collar. Okay. More jets. <laughs> yeah. and, um, <laughs> so I had to grind through the the spray on bed liner. Uh, which that was actually there when I got the truck also. And then I just welded a collar to the actual bed oh. so that this post oh, just slides out. in and out. And this is just a little random, like one and a half inch tubing over inch and a quarter tubing. And you can just make a little oh. poor man's hinge and just same thing, just weld that. And so the, the whole cot will fold up against the wall and there's some little oh, car pins, pins up here. Dude, so then you can pull everything out and you yeah. have like a big bed and like you can put up whatever couch you need in there. Back, right? yes. dude that's uh, insane and then so and then when you have like say your wife or someone else with you you can make two beds in here by just putting a little extension there yep that's this little angle iron yeah. piece here and then with this little curb on the this eyelet Yep, exactly. This eyelet is just because I cut this section out, so there's another piece that just sets right in there. Yeah. So you have like a full section. That's key because you can actually sit in there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can sit upright and you have to hunch your head a little bit, but yeah, you have a nice little mud room. Yeah. And you can't actually sit in there and make your coffee if it's. That makes raining. such a difference, like, because. I crawl into that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like a little rock ledge basically, but yeah. this feels like a home just having that extra space right there. Yeah. And so that worked out well with it. I've seen the bins for storage in the past mm -hmm. and a lot of them are full length, which you can fit a lot of stuff, but I actually went with like a, a two thirds. Like it's it's just you know four yeah. foot bed, this is a six foot width bin. 
because then it gives you that front space. Yeah. Oh, four foot bin on a six foot length bed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then when you have it on the end, even what if is you it gliding on? Just nothing. It's just <laughs> it's just on the bed. Just like everyone else is overthinking it. Yeah. It's just <laughs> there. And then with the curb for oh. the the little secondary platform oh, that keeps it from coming out. Yeah. Dude. And then what's nice too about the forefoot is you can actually reach it and pick yeah. it up. Where if it's six feet, my arms, I don't know. Yeah. Not too many people's arms. Wingspan, are that long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it gets real heavy when you fill it full of stuff. Yeah. Ugh. There's so much smartness going on. It's so hard to be smart. Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah, I made just, there's another just random bin that I throw in for trips when the boards aren't under there. And just saying, so you just feel full like Just table. so you can pull out whatever you stuff in, basically. Yeah, because yeah. to try to get into that back corner is not easy. Have you see me crawling in for my pelican cases? <laughs> yeah, my brother <laughs> made like a, like a, a hook on a stick. I know, I was thinking of doing out. that, but I was like, whatever, flat mm -hmm. bedtime, so. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, nice. Mm. Oh, wetsuit hanging? Yeah, this was part of like a rework to my first solar panel. I actually inherited from a friend who works in the industry and it was a full-size panel but we just cut a third off of it uh -huh. and instantly fractured the glass but it worked well enough <laughs> and I mounted that on the side here and then that was actually what these clamps were originally oh. and then it would fold up and it had little like oh, stands yeah. to hold it out. Oh, but, to like position it? Yeah, yeah, but it was way bigger and heavier than what I needed but it was like free and at the time it was like just did it quick before a trip. Uh -huh. So I had these and then just a little while ago I always like wanted to hang like the wetsuit or just kind of yeah. whatever comes up and then just more random scrap. I don't know the diameter of the rod, but it ended up just being perfect. For a wetsuit hanger? Yeah, it just goes right in and then you can just <laughs> hang or whatever. Or do pull-ups or whatever. Yeah. That's yeah. so perfect. I just got to remember to take it off before I drive away. <laughs> Back to the inside. <laughs> okay, nice. Now we're inside. Mm. L coffee maker from yeah on. <laughs> yeah my old teeny little coffee maker um it's 700 watts which is about as low draw as a coffee maker gets yeah um but it works the car has to be running because the voltage drop yeah. it pulls too much it'll trigger all the the low voltage cutouts um but yeah you just have an 800 watt uh inverter which is wired into this is the little electrical bin like here's the oh, charge yeah. controller for solar yep and so everything comes from the cab into this little electrical compartment <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah this is my hair dryer for a doctor said I need to dry out my ear after uh, for surfing. surfing yeah That's classic. Um, and so yeah this is the ARB air compressor for the air locker and it's the like middle one so I can I have onboard air underneath mm -hmm. um, I don't have a reserve but I can just hook the hose and it directly just fills yeah. the tires the reserve thing if you're running tools awesome if mm. you're not it's like a waste it's like filling up five tires yep yeah yeah and I don't I don't need it and so there's here's the the other blue C fuse block I was talking about um, so this is pretty much all the wiring for everything here in the back of the cab as well as some of the the side lighting yeah um, and then yeah here's the posts for the inverter because mm. it's it's high draw it, if you tried to connect it directly to the charge controller mm -hmm. it didn't like it because the it's for some reason. it's just a you know 35 dollar <laughs> like charge that's a 30 yeah. that's only 35 yeah it's like 35 bucks the old amazon special and it's got the nice like monitor yeah um, damn I thought that was more expensive. Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a good find. Um, Reading lamp? Yep. Yeah, the, the old oh, nice. yeah, flashlight and then some old... Just, yeah, those are super. Those look super handy. Yeah, they're, they're nice. And they're wired in, they're not battery? Yep, yeah, these are hardwired down into here. Yeah. Um, the, they, they're a little brighter than what would be nice for... Some tape, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then some mosquito repellent. We have a, <laughs> <laughs> some computer fans that I rigged up to a, a dimmer switch. So you have a variable like no fan way. setting. And so there's two, one here and another up top. No way. Because this is notched here so that the, the cot can, the uh, yeah, so that the cot can actually swing up 
like we talked about and oh, be yeah. pinned out of place but it just looks like art <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it, it's uh asymmetrical um <laughs> So yeah, it's especially because there's no sliding windows, so it gives you a little bit of ventilation if it's warm and you have to, or if it's rainy, if you gotta yeah. close things up, you can get some air movement. And then with mosquitoes, it keeps them off your face, and you then- cover the rest. And the noise. Yeah. You can't hear the mosquitoes. Uh, so like, whatever, they'll bite you, but at least they don't keep you up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's hilarious. Um, yeah, I love your books up there too, I was like, I always buy some books to put up in my chat. <laughs> look more, look more learned. Than yeah, that. exactly. It's, it's ambiance, and yeah, you know, I have a Kindle now, so I don't go through as many paper books as as I did. But they're nice. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like the old jacket store, just kind of yeah. whatever. Um, then the old kind of electrical stuff, like little speaker, and yeah. mostly generally I keep electronic accessories, like headlamp stuff. I want to charge. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's just like night. Nice. Like it's just like. So simple is just the best, you know? It's hard to come up with something so simple, like, oh, maybe a little door or compartment, but it's like, just some stretchy string holds mm -hmm. everything back, like, so nice. Yep. Toilet paper. Necessity. Priority one, yeah, so that's nice to have a, just a dedicated little spot. It's always there. Yeah, and then you know if you're out, too, before yeah. you take off trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, so, yeah, that's the electrical, and then there's another little just storage hooch over the wheel well tie downs hatchet um so yeah. i have like a quart of oil some like oh um, nice. penetrating oil some random things stuck yeah. in there um spare u-joint oh nice mm -hmm. that's like i wouldn't have thought you could really use any space over the wheel well but yeah yeah, yeah. it's like just you can stuff it get enough okay so we're cutting now to the sleeping pad <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it's actually like a Thermarest uh, Dream Time, which is like a it's meant to go over an inflatable, and so I actually got that, and then I just had some old random foam pieces that I just kept chopping up and stuffing oh, in there. Oh, what? So it's so yeah. you so the Thermarest part is like a bag. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so you, it, they're meant, and they come with a little piece of like um, memory foam in there. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, so I just I didn't want to deal with anything inflatable, so I just. I don't even remember where I got this, but it's it was just left over. It's, it feels like pretty dense too. Yeah, it's nice. It's soft enough to where you don't feel the bottom, but like or yeah. dense enough so you yeah. don't sink all the way through. That's why I have like a thermarest under my piece of mm. foam I got off the street. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. And it's nice zero degree bag for out here and it's like totally cozy. Yeah, yeah. It's it's when it hatches open and warm. Jets. <laughs> we keep having fighter jets fly out. Oh there it is, way up there. Okay, Ben said I could lie down in here just to give you like a little idea of kind of how sweet this is, especially with it opened up. Tons of, dude, I'm like so jealous right now. Like, <laughs> this is so cozy. Yeah. And it's totally high enough to like, I can like, like it's not, mine is like right here, but you can totally sit like that. Yeah. Like you can't totally extend, but. But it's livable. It's so livable. Yeah. That's awesome. So you get this little thing. Yeah. They don't make this fridge anymore. What fridge is this? It's the Dometic, uh, I think 25 quart. So they changed, and I think it's 28 is the smallest one they make. Um, that is quite a few years now, and I bought it thinking, like, you know, it was 650 bucks maybe when I bought it, and it was kind of hard to drop that much money. But as soon as I was like, oh, I'll turn it off and turn it on, and you know, use it here and there, and then. As soon as I put it in and turned it on, I'm like, I'm never turning this thing off. It's so cool. It and is. it just literally never turns off. It's no. running off the solar and just sits in your driveway if you're not... Yep. Yeah. It's always cold. So there's... Dude. Just... It's such a perfect size. Like, why mm. don't they make this anymore? Yeah. The only thing I didn't like was the top has kind of a weird rounded uh -huh. level. And they had, like, they had the wherewithal to make four little depressions for cup holders, but the whole thing was rounded and mm -hmm. so then I just said screw it and I just screwed in a flat piece of wood in the top. Literally screw it. Yeah, I just, just screwed it into the plastic. <laughs> <That's dope. laughs> awesome. All right, well, this is kind of the inside, you guys. Can see around. I Super. The, I was in the little kangaroo pouches. Oh, yeah. It's just out of old sleeping bag. Um, you know, when you buy a bag and they come in the big 
Oh yeah, like a stuff storage. sack. Yeah, the big stuff sacks that are meant. Oh, for, like, that's actually storage. kind of a key tip because I've looked for stuff like this, and it's always the mesh is always way too wide, yeah. like to hold things. Yeah, so just cut like that a laundry up bag or a stuff sack. Sewed it together and. Dude, I'm seriously full of mm -hmm. nuggets of information. <laughs> okay, quick intermission to just show you what this looks like if you're in here yourself. Super, super cozy. Got both windows, either side, just epic. Ooh, fridge just kicked on. <laughs> nice. Well, that's good. We just moved from the fridge to kind of the cooking setup. Yeah. Um, I gotta point this out straight away. Bike chain. <laughs> Super genius. <laughs> yeah, that was like I had just P cord there for years and it bothered me every single time I looked at it. And then I was cleaning out a just a bin of scrap and there was a bike chain in there and it was just all of a sudden wait, that's gonna work perfect. So I just welded it. It's <laughs> so smart. Yeah, onto the little table and it just folds up and just sits and it just awesome. rests against the back there's no i'm gonna put a little magnet on it just because sometimes it falls down but only when that gate's open it doesn't really matter but oh it just rests yeah it just it just sits up there and just under its own little i think just kind of the hinge just binds just enough <laughs> nice. Yes. And it rattles a little bit on the back, but you can't hear it. No, yeah, and oh. it's like, and it even like kind of just barely presses against the the, the tailgate. Yeah, the and paint is not really major yeah, concern. There's like a little truck. wear mark on yeah. the paint, but it doesn't just rattle can it if it gets down. <laughs> That's why everything's white. How did this come about? Uh, a friend just gave it to me. He just has, <laughs> his friend works for some van accessory company, and he's like, hey, do you want this? I'm like, yeah. And so I just tied it on there, I put the the dog balls in there or like spatulas yeah. or something. It's just kind of convenient. Yeah, it's super convenient. Yeah, just like, I don't know, I'll just put it there. That's um, awesome. Yes, yeah, so I made the, the swing gate bumper a um, handful of years ago. You know, there's definitely some things I do a little different now than I than I did initially, but you know, it's still, I've been real happy with it. It's kind of had two settings to where it opens fully mm. right, at a right angle and then it'll open. Oh, there goes my. Little you drink <laughs> baby. Um, so you can get a, just a little more kind of locked out yeah. real estate for cooking in the back. That's super nice. Mine has that same feature. It's mm. smart. Yeah. Um, and then, oh yeah, there's a, a rear floodlight for cooking. Just the switch is just kind of right in here with enormous reach. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. And then actually there's another one, like the interior. Oh, yeah. Like main lighting, because these little guys just don't really fill the whole camper yeah. but this is nice for when you actually want to like see in here um, cozy vibes yeah and you've got i'm on this side now mm -hmm. water and gas yeah yeah so i it varies i have two jerry cans uh for fuel that for longer trips i'll throw both of those in there and then i can throw the water jerry up top mm -hmm. um but for something like this so we know i don't need 10 extra gallons just a yeah, single jerry of fuel and then single jerry of water um and then just a little platform because yeah to keep them from bouncing out yeah and also nice flat space like flat space mm -hmm. that's all about flat space yeah. it's so nice to be able to set stuff down yeah and this is a good spot for like your sponges like when oh, you're doing yeah. dishes because they just live in there and they dry out really well oh that's so and smart and they run off it just goes to nowhere so yeah this is just same thing just random scrap laying around that just welded little piece together and it had to build like a little stopper so that when this clamp is fully depressed it bottoms out yeah um, into oh, yeah. this little it doesn't quite bottom out yeah with the so plastic. it's not just like under tension yep yeah that yeah. makes sense yeah so it helps keep it and you've just got relocated your stock bumper yeah <laughs> that's awesome yep. bumper license plate lights and then you just added a rear rear view which is sweet yeah super nice yeah they like just weld on another random chunk of metal just to Dude. give it the spin Welding. Added. Yeah, <laughs> they had to space it out because it was too close. It would just kind of seize. Oh yeah, totally. No, but it looks back. like it all flows. Mm -hmm. And then what do you keep in the box? That's just like all my recovery stuff: the toe strap, the um, the airline, the air oh, hose, yeah. um, which actually I'll pull out there for later to show you that. Um, yeah. And then some tire plugs, which those Got work. Have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, a snatch block for the winch. Nice. Some fusees, some flares, and uh, the the nozzle for the 
uh, oh, jerry yeah. can. Um, and same, same thing, that's just kind of some more random yeah, flat bad. bar. And then some, and just a bolt and a nut. Oh, and yeah. Just a random little hinge just kind of welded together. <laughs> <laughs> and is one of them... No, it's just in there for good, right? Yeah. It's like a locked up hinge. Yeah, okay. that does not come off. Yeah. Oh, you could do, I guess... You could do a bolt into a nut. That would be cool. Yeah. Just, I mean, I don't know why you'd need to remove it, but. Uh, if, if you're going to take this out and you don't just want this whole thing on points. there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that thing just drops down. Yeah. Nice. A little trash bag. Yeah. There's like some random bag thing that a friend had and he just, I'm like, wait, I can use that. And so the trash roos are just so huge and I don't have the spare on the back, so it wouldn't work. And yeah. So it keeps the trash bags on the side and. <laughs> so it's like. Mm -hmm. just makes so much sense like this is like a perfect bag for it yeah just awesome. had to sew on some little oh nice you clips. added that yeah just because the velcro doesn't really work then it keeps it closed brilliant <laughs> nice dude okay well we're almost getting to the awning which is super cool but you got water here yeah this is like a four inch abs uh pipe i spray painted it white to keep the temperature down just because, you know, some of the black ABS people use for showers, which is nice, but I'd rather... You're I'm, piping I'm, hot. I'm a shower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like... A, he does shower. Just, yeah. We're on day three of, like, a <laughs> desert time. <laughs> yeah, so, like, drinking water is much more valuable than... Shower. Shower water. Um, so, it holds five gallons. It's a little... It's, like, six and a half feet. Mm -hmm. It's... I kind of slapped it together. The vent could be done better. And it's uh, totally removable. Yep. Right? Just bark. Yep. The two toggles. Like, and it's also clamp. ridiculously like on there. Yeah. Like you can, I can, I can step on it. Which yeah. It was a bonus. And the flow is fine if you're parked flat. And this end is a little longer than the front just to give it a little droop. And it's on the side, not on the top because you don't want weight sloshing on the top. Yeah. Yeah. Keep that center of gravity down. Um, this little table. Oh, yeah. It's just, uh, I had this kind of ages ago on a little bracket on that back that would kind of hook on and it was just it didn't store well and then i just figured this out of from mexico and so it just lives there oh that's so smart this little tiny notch tiny little notch yeah it just binds in there i just had to rip this down i think it was like an inch and a quarter or something uh -huh. and so it just sits in there and <laughs> that's so sick yeah. that's like that's the i feel like that's like such a good example of like what i think is like the pinnacle of design i mean obviously it's just mm. a piece of wood but it's like something that is so simple yeah like but it just because it works together with those other pieces is like why it you know how it works there's no hinges there's no clamp there's no mm -hmm. tighten it on there there's no extra support needed or anything that kind of stuff yeah makes me excited <laughs> that was just one of those little dumb luck moments it's yeah like, wait, i know oh. well yeah sometimes it's dumb luck but it's like that's the kind of ideas i try you know try to replicate through everything else mm -hmm. that's awesome all right well let's check out the awning because the awning system is awesome all right, we're kind of backtracking a little bit because the awning's been set up this whole video, but this is such a cool awning, and I have kind of a thing for awnings since, you know, I made that one, and, uh, but you made this one long before, and I think this is, like, one of the smartest awning designs that I've seen, and you set this up yesterday when we had, like, 40-mile-an-hour wind down here, and, like, 80 mile an hour wind up there, maybe cut to a scene of us struggling in that. <laughs> Don't look that way. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I pulled mine out just to like see if it would blow away and it would have probably broken my camper shell and it was also impossible to put away. This was rock solid, so I don't know. Talk me through, how did you do this? And yeah, um, I wanted something off the back just to kind of create more space and shelter for cooking. Uh -huh. And I've been in some pretty good wind storms, uh, like in, same thing with sand and it's not that comfortable. Um, and so I wanted something extended off the back that I could kind of make a little vestibule to kind of enclose in the cooking yeah. area and then just transition in and out of the back of the truck. And what I learned when I was doing the the cot and the rack was that uh inch and a half 120 wall tubing works as a perfect outer sleeve for inch and a quarter round tubing and that's where i used two there's two rods or two sticks of a uh, inch and a quarter that sits inside 
inch and a half 120 walled round tubing That's to perfect. make a sleeve yeah. where it's kind of like a, like a trombone. Yeah. And um, there's no, you can just spray lube in there if you need or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it'll bind it. It gets dirty. It's done better than I was expecting. I was a little nervous at first to see if it was going to kind of rust and get tight. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, every once I just spray it with penetrating oil yeah. and I painted it just to kind of help a little bit. Yeah. And, um, so it does fine. So there's these, these collars at the rear, which I think are about a foot long. Uh -huh. Um, and then at the very front, there's kind of two smaller collars that receive the end at the front of the truck to kind of hold that in place when it's, when it's pressed oh, in. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it just pulls yeah. out, um, they have a little clip to just keep it retained against the truck. Uh -huh. Cause it, the, the tarp itself is always attached. Yep. Just zip tied. This is a copper pipe left over some, from some plumbing at the house. <laughs> <laughs> and I just sewed, you know, the sleeve around that. Yeah. And then just zip tied it to the back of zip ties. Yeah. You know, and then it just pulls out, so and just kind of unrolls. It kind of sticks a little bit sometimes because these pillow blocks aren't. It's not super rigid. Yeah. On like that kind of lateral uh -huh. movement, but it just comes. Well, much. and we went through uh, silt field. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little little dusty. It needs a little bit of oil. And we're in Death Valley. Yeah. But as far as setting up awnings go, like now it's like pretty much almost done. Yeah. And so that's it, and then I just sewed some Velcro on. Yeah. Dude, sewing is a man skill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have a machine at work? Yeah. Yeah. Like an old FAF 130. It's from like the 1940s. <laughs> so, so it's kind of Probably like all metal. Yep, exactly. That's good. As you can see, it gets like a little bit of corrosion and abrasion, but... Uh -huh. I feel like people might think like, oh, I'm going to do that. And then they would be like, overthink it. Like I need to do ball bearings and all that kind of stuff. Mm. But it's like... How long have you had this on your truck? Three years now. Yeah. And then like, and it's not like we dirt. just sprayed it with penetrating oil. Mm -mm. Probably. <laughs> no, I haven't. I don't think I've sprayed anything on it in six months. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, these were the key item though. These yeah. are called pillow blocks. I was just kind of, you know, searching for like recessed bearing. Yeah. Something, something, and uh. eBay. Yep. eBay. I think they're like twenty this... bucks each or something. Uh huh. There's and, basically uh, a bearing inside a housing that you can, that's just like yep. awesome. Yeah, and there's a bunch of different sizes. So the same thing, just weld it on a little base plate. And you found a tube that just fit the bearing, basically? Yep, yep. I think this is inch. Oh, nice, okay. Yeah, and you can order the, in, the inner diameter of the bearing. They have all the specs on what you order. Wow, from eBay. Yeah, Dang. that was the only place I could find them. Maybe there's more out, so pillow blocks. Yeah. Sick. And they come in different shapes and sizes. Yeah. That's super useful. And then you added, so that, I mean, you got this, which I was really impressed with. It was super windy. We parked the trucks into the wind and it was sandy too. So we were like covering our eyes. But with this out, the wind was basically deflecting off and um, standing underneath. It was like so much more comfortable. Yeah. And yeah. it's really nice in the rain too. Because then you have like shelter. And I welded on these little collars for some telescoping rods to kind of support it. Cause mm -hmm. I thought I might need that initially. And no, I've, I mean, it, it was like howling yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll, yeah, it, it holds well. And then nice. And then you got, you just sewed this up like not that long ago, right? Yeah. This was before the last Mexico trip. Um, so I think to kind of get that vestibule off the back cause it gets windy down there yeah. a lot and cold and it does rain in the winter. And, um, so yeah, so I just kind of sewed this together. So it turns it into kind of, where'd a, you get the fabric? Uh, this, we have a big spool of it that was just like cast off. Like, um, it was, it was like excess surplus that someone just gave us. It's like a duffel bag, like almost like you feel like. Yeah. Like that, like uh Cordura or something. Oh yeah. That's something super like that. Nice. Yeah. It's, that's the same. That that's like the good. budget score. Cause that's probably expensive. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, anyway, it's not a cheap material and it's like bomb. Bomb proof. So this actually goes on easier than... <laughs> Bombable snowman. Yeah. That's <laughs> so dope. <laughs> nice, fully enclosed.
<laughs> and then just ties down. Yeah. Oh, so, nice. And all the way over there. Yep. And then these actually throw over the top to uh -huh. the, just tighten it down. Yep. And it snugs up and then just some guy wires to tag it down. I have the same thing, a pole Yeah. that holds up this end. And so yeah. this is what it turns into. Freaking tent city. <laughs> yeah. And we got rained on quite a bit and it, the way it overlaps with the ARB awning, it sheds water well. Yeah. Dude. So epic. I was like the... <laughs> it just makes your little mobile house that much better. Yeah. And then you actually get kind of all day shade on the fender, which has the fridge because that yeah. gets up in the sun. Yeah. That's epic. That's super epic. All right. All right, Ben. Dude, thanks so much for taking the time to invite me on this trip and take all the time <laughs> to walk around and share all the details. That It's just such a cool build. I think everyone will agree with me. Um, I live close to Ben. We're always hanging out. So if you have a specific question that um, Ben went over something you wanted to ask him about, chances are if you leave it in the comment, I might be able to get Ben to answer it And uh, if he's not fighting a fire or something. So go ahead and... Uh, leave any questions down there. We'll kind of get to that and guys. Thanks for sticking around if you want to see more videos Like Ben's truck, although I don't know if there's ever gonna be a truck like Ben's truck <laughs> But uh, yeah, hang out on the channel Be sweet if you subscribe be rad if you comment and we'll see you in the next Video whatever it is. I'm doing on YouTube